Hi guys, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna go over the Day 18 project, which is a reading list similar to what we built in Days 12 and 14, but we're gonna use JSON to store data instead of CSV files. I know we haven't looked at JSON files yet, so I do recommend that you read the project brief linked in the description below this video to learn more about JSON. There we talk about what JSON is and also about the Python built-in JSON module that allows us to easily interact with JSON files. We're going to talk about that quickly here, but the blog post has a bit more information. What you see in front of you, and I know the code is a little bit small, but we're starting to get more code in here, so we need a bit more room to be able to see it, so I've shrank the font size a little bit. So what you're seeing in front of you is the code for the hard version of Day 14's project. And so in this project, we had a few features. We have the ability to add books to our file. And remember, in day 14, we were working with CSV files. We have the ability to remove books. We have the ability to find books amongst the books that we have in our reading list with a search term by searching for a book title. We have the ability to display all the books in our reading list and to mark books as read. And so if we go down to the menu down here, you can see that users can add books, delete books, list books, mark books as read, search for them, or finally exit the application. And so this was the menu, and you can see down here we've got our while loop, which allows us to do that. If the selected option was A, then we ran the add book function. If it was D, we updated the reading list by deleting a book. And then if the selected option was L, we got all the books and displayed them or displayed a message saying that the list was empty. If it was R, then we marked a book as read. And if it was S, we found books and then displayed the books that matched the search term or we say we didn't find any books. So that was the menu and I'd recommend that you read the Day 14 project walkthrough if you haven't already for a complete explanation on how all this works. So, do that, pause the video, do that, and then come back and we will continue with this. Something interesting to note here is that the update reading list function takes in this parameter called operation, and later on inside the function we actually run the operation parameter as if it were a function. That is because we are passing in here a function and we are running it later on. If you don't know what this is, have a look at the first class functions post that we have also linked below in the description of this video. It explains why this works and sort of what's happening behind the scenes. But rest assured that whatever value we pass into this parameter, we're running later on as a function. So down here in our menu, for example, we're passing in the delete book function. And that is what runs when we get to here. All right, so in order to swap out all of this uh, so that it stops using CSV files and starts using JSON files, we have to first uh, import the JSON module. So we're going to import JSON at the top. JSON is a built-in module in Python, so there's nothing for us to install or anything like that. It just comes with Python and allows us to very easily interact with JSON files. So there are two main methods in the JSON module. We've got json.load that allows us to give it a file, such as, for example, this reading list here, which is a file that we open. If we give this method a file, it will load the JSON file and give us back a Python dictionary or list. And also we've got json.dump that does the opposite. We give it a Python dictionary or list as well as a file, and it will write that dictionary or list to the file. Again, it's important to understand what JSON is, so do read the project brief for day 18 before continuing with this video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to the get all books function and we're going to change it so that it reads from the JSON file instead of the CSV file. At the moment, what we're doing is we are iterating through every line in the reading list file and we are stripping the white space and splitting by the comma, giving us four different variables. We're then creating a dictionary with those variables and appending it to the books list defined up here. And finally, we're returning that. However, because we've got access to the JSON module, we can actually read the entire file in one go by using json.load. Uh, so what we can do is we can say books equal json.load, and then we just give it the reading list and it's going to take care of everything for us. 
In fact, because we are doing this and assigning to a variable right away and we're not really doing any processing, we certainly don't need this variable up there. And also we don't need to return books down there. We could just return the result of calling json.load with the reading list and that is going to do everything for us. Notice that because we're using this third party module, it becomes much easier to define these functions that would actually be really complicated if we had to write all the code for doing this ourselves. I'm going to change the name of the file as well to JSON, and I'm going to get rid of this comment that we no longer need. By the way, we should create a books.json file that has the content provided in the project brief. So I'm going to go and do that, open the file menu, create books.json, and put that content in there. So you can see here the JSON is a list that contains two JSON objects similar to Python dictionaries, and each one has information about a book. Again, more information provided in the project brief. All right, so let's go back to our code. And we have the get all books function now defined to work with our JSON file. Next up, let's go up to the top and modify our add book function. Notice that when we get all the books from the JSON file, we get a list of dictionaries. That is what the JSON module is going to give us back when it reads the file. And so when it comes to adding something to that file, we're actually going to have to add a new dictionary to the list. So I'm going to go and open the books.json file again and show you what we're going to want to do in the add book function. You can see that we've got a list of dictionaries essentially, or a list of JSON objects as they should be called. What we're going to want to do in our add book function is essentially add another of these objects to the list. And then we will end up with three books. Obviously the data will be different depending on what the user enters. But when we add one more object, we will add one more dictionary to this list and so on. So it's not enough anymore to simply add a new line of data to the file. That is what we were doing here. We were opening the file in append mode and adding a new line of data to it. We can't do that anymore. Instead, what we have to do is we have to load the reading list, which is that list. We have to create a dictionary with this data and we have to append it. So we'll start with that. We'll do books equal get all books. And that is going to load the JSON file, give us a list of dictionaries. Then we're going to construct the new book. Just like that by creating a dictionary of title, uh, author, year, and also the red status, which should start off as not read. And then we're going to append that to the books list, we'll say books dot append book. And now we've modified this, but we haven't modified the file. We've only modified the list of dictionaries that we read from the file. If we want to go and overwrite the file with its new content, we can do that. All we have to do is open the file in writing mode, and that is going to erase it and give us an empty canvas, essentially. And what we're going to write is json.dump books into reading list. And that is going to essentially take this entire list of dictionaries convert it to a string or JSON data and dump it into the reading list file. You can see how that is a little bit easier to think about, although the code is a little bit longer. Something that we can do again is to put this into one line, just like that. And if you prefer that, then by all means, go ahead with that. Notice that the major change we're doing across these functions is we're swapping out CSVs by dictionaries. And that is one of the major building blocks of JSON files. Next up, we have to go and change the other function that deals with the file. And that is the update reading list function. Notice that we are writing comma separated values in here. And of course, we're not going to want to be doing that anymore. And we're also writing to the CSV file. And again, we're not going to want to do that anymore. Also something important to note is that when we execute the operation function, as discussed in a day 14 brief, that modifies the books list. Therefore, by the time we've executed this operation, the books list is a new list with the modified data, whatever that might be deleting books or even marking them as read. Therefore, in here, all we have to do is overwrite the JSON file again, and save our new list of data. And we know how to do that. We just did that a moment ago, we can do json.dump books into reading list. 
These are actually all the changes we have to make in order to move from CSV files to JSON files. I understand that this project was quite complicated, so if you haven't fully followed me, I'd recommend reading the day 14 hard project brief, then reading the day 18 project brief. That's Both of them are linked below in the description. That's going to help you understand more about what's going on. So that is the end of the required changes for this project to start using JSON files instead of CSV files. So you do have to remember to use the correct files, of course. But we can actually make a few more improvements with the knowledge that we have gained since day 14. The first improvement is we can use unpacking in here instead of having this verbose set of symbols uh, like these. So that's the end of the required changes to transition this project from CSV files to JSON files. Do make sure to name your files correctly here. And, but we can actually make a couple more improvements. And the first improvement is going to be to change this so it's a little bit more readable. At the moment, it's a little bit verbose. There's a lot of symbols being used here. And we can do this more nicely by using, for example, unpacking. We can unpack the different values of our dictionary into separate variables. We've already seen how to do that. Title author, year, and red status into book.values, and now we can use these in here. We already know how to do that, and I actually believe we did this earlier on in a previous project as well, but do excuse me if that didn't happen. I may have imagined it. So we've got that, and that's clearly a little bit easier. But the other thing we can do is, instead of using an F string, we can just use a normal string, and then we can use the format function to pass in the book as keyword arguments. Remember that book is a dictionary that has four keys, title, author, year, and read, and each of those keys have their value. We can use star star book to pass each of the keys as a keyword argument to the format function, which then is going to take care of assigning each key and value to the appropriate place in this string. If we do this, we no longer need that. So this makes use of the star star syntax that we learned just yesterday. So this makes use of the star star syntax that we have just learned. Another thing that we may want to do is add in a check to make sure that the file exists before we try to append a book to it. Notice that if we get all books here, which means that we're trying to essentially read the file unloaded, we're going to get an error if the file doesn't exist. So therefore, we may want to create the file first if this fails. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new function that takes care of creating the file for us. So we'll do create book file. And what we're going to do is with open of books.json in X mode as reading list. What X mode does, by the way, is it allows us to create a file and then write content to it. But it gives us an error if the file already exists. And so we'll add this in here, and then we'll do json.dump, and we're going to dump an empty list into reading list. That is going to make sure that when we create the file initially, if it doesn't exist already, we're going to have an empty list in that file. Then when we get all books, we're going to get back an empty list. Then when we add a book and we try to append to it, that'll work because it will be a list. It will be empty, but it will be a list. And then we will be able to overwrite it with our new content in here. However, of course, what happens if the file does already exist? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to give us an error, which is going to crash our program. Therefore, we do need to handle that so that we don't crash our program if this happens. What we'll do is we will use a try block. A try block is something similar in a way to the other blocks. And what it allows us to do is run some code, and if an error happens while executing this code, then we jump to the accept block. And here we can do pass because we don't want to do anything. And so again, we will try to run this. If an error happens, we jump into here and we do nothing. Instead of crashing our program, which is what would happen normally. And by the way, Repolit seems to have messed up some syntax here. Please don't worry about that. Now, something that we normally don't want to do is have an accept block like this, because that means that any error that happens, we will catch. Instead, what we want to do is we want to catch file exists error, which is the error that will be raised by this if the file already exists when we try to open it. And so in this case, if the file exists, we're going to do nothing. We're just going to continue with our program. If it doesn't exist, we're going to create it and put an empty list in it. 
now we just have to call this function when we start our program and we'll be good to go. So we can go down to the bottom here, just above the menu prompt, for example, we can put create book file. Now remember, if the file exists, this will do nothing. And if it doesn't, it will create it. So let's go over to our files, delete books.json. Now, all we have to do is run the main.py file. And let me bring that up here. Oh, let me run that again. And you see that we get the menu in here. Now, if we open the files tab, the books.json file may not appear there. We may have to refresh the tab in order to make it appear or be displayed there. So just do that if it doesn't appear and it should get there and you can see that it exists. And at the moment, it will be an empty file. That's totally normal. What that means is that we have ran our create book file function. And now I refreshed, so the app stopped running. We can run it again and you'll see we get no error. Even though the file already exists, we can now add a book, for example, uh, such as Fluent Python. And there we have it. Now we can list the books, for example, and we get Fluent Python not read. We're going to mark a book as read uh, and we have to make sure to spell it correctly there. And that has been now marked as read. We can list the books again and now it shows up as read. And uh, we're going to quit at this point and we're going to open the books.json file and you can see that we've got this JSON data in here. It looks like a list of dictionaries, but it's really not. It's a list of JSON objects. So that's everything that we wanted to do for this project. I hope that has been interesting. I know these projects are getting more complicated, but I would encourage you to not think of this as something that you should understand right off the bat. Just by reading this code, you're going to know what's going on. You're going to be able to jump in there and start changing things and making improvements. That's simply not going to happen as projects get more complicated. You have to take your time, read through the functions, understand what's going on, read through the menus, run the application, and try to play around with it and understand what's going on. It takes time to jump into a code base. Even a small code base like this one still starts to get complicated. So give yourself time spend some time with the code, play around with it, and you'll understand it as time passes. Also, as you get more experienced, jumping into code bases gets easier, so don't worry about that. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope that you've learned something in this video and that you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.